Has the water pump in your BMW gone bad? Or maybe you just want to replace it because it's been a long time, or you don't know how long it's been. BMWs are well known for having cooling system issues, so I've gotten into the habit of replacing the water pump every 50,000 miles, along with a lot of other parts in the cooling system. I have a whole other video about that, and I've cut it down into this video for anyone who wants to replace just the water pump. There is a company I won't name that sells high-end water pumps for the E46, and they're supposed to last much longer than OEM pumps, but I purchased one years ago, and the bearings failed after just 77,000 miles. So I've decided the best route is to just buy OEM pumps from reputable manufacturers and replace them regularly along with the rest of the cooling system parts. The one I'm installing today is made by an Italian company called Graf. Also, there used to be an issue with some water pumps having plastic impellers that would break apart over time, but I don't think that's really a problem anymore. If your car is an automatic with a mechanical fan instead of an electric fan, there are some extra steps that won't be included in this video, but I've put a link in the description to a write-up that covers that part. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Breaker bar. Torque wrench. Socket wrench. Socket extension. T50 torque socket, 10 mm socket, electric screwdriver, T25 torx bit, Phillips number 3 bit, large flathead screwdriver, tiny flathead screwdriver, pliers, plastic prying tool, a floor jack, and a set of jack stands. For this job I also needed two wood blocks, rags, safety glasses, a creeper, a light, fluid drain pan, magnetic bowl, plastic bowl, silicone grease, one gallon of BMW coolant, one gallon of distilled water, and a new water pump. There are links in the description for everything I used. Before starting this job, make sure the engine is cold and the car is parked on flat ground. The first thing to do is put the front of the car on jack stands and remove the plastic belly pan. Your belly pan might look different, but this one at least can be removed with a Phillips number 3 screwdriver. With that out of the way, lower the car back onto the ground. This part of the air intake is secured with four plastic pins that can be pulled out with a regular pair of pliers. Each pin is made of two pieces, so make sure not to lose any of them. All four of these came out in one piece this time. Squeeze the sides of the intake where it connects to the air box, and it should pop right out. The air box is held down with two 10 mm bolts. Remove the wiring housing that's connected to a small hook on the back of the airbox. Undo the two clips connecting the MAF sensor and pull the airbox out. Remove this plastic pin from the auxiliary fan with a plastic pry tool, or carefully use a pair of dikes to pry it out. This pin came out in two pieces, so make sure to get both. The other side of the fan is secured with a metal screw that can be removed with a T25 Torx. Squeeze to remove the two electrical connections on the fan. Also disconnect the camshaft position sensor and tuck all of these wires out of the way. The fan should now easily slide out. Pull it straight up. Now we have access to the belts. Use a small flathead screwdriver to pry off the plastic cap on the tensioner pulley. Insert the T50 torque socket into the front of the pulley and turn it clockwise with a breaker bar to ease tension on the belt so it can be removed. Break loose the four 10 mm bolts securing the water pump pulley. 
With the bolts loosened, the main belt can now be removed the same way as the first belt. Completely remove the four bolts and set the water pump pulley aside. The water pump is secured to the engine with four 10mm nuts. The water pump has a pretty tight seal, so you might need to wiggle it out, or you could carefully use a plastic mallet to break it free. This will release the last of the coolant. Now we're ready to install the new water pump, but first wipe off the pulleys and any mating surfaces. I couldn't get the new water pump all the way in this time until I applied some silicone grease to the o-ring. The pump I removed had this ridge on the top, so that's the way I'm going to install the new one, but honestly, I don't think the orientation matters. Once the water pump pops into place, you can reinstall the four 10 mm nuts. These nuts should be torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds. Reattach the water pump pulley with its four 10mm bolts and torque them to 7.4 foot-pounds as well. The main belt can be a little tricky to install. Here's a diagram I found that should help. I like to route the belt around all the pulleys except for the power steering pump pulley, then compress the tensioner pulley and fully seat the belt. Route the air conditioner belt around the crankshaft pulley and over the tensioner pulley. Compress the tensioner pulley and seat the belt around the AC pulley. Make sure to double check that the belts are centered on each pulley and don't forget to reinstall the dust caps on the tensioner pulleys. Now the fan can slide back into place, but first, take a look at the retaining clips it needs to slide into at the bottom of the radiator. The edge of the fan should slide down between the radiator and the expansion tank like this. Make sure the bottom of the fan is securely in place. Reinstall the plastic pin into the corner of the fan next to the expansion tank. Then reinstall the screw in the opposite corner with the T25 Torx. Reconnect the two electrical connectors on the fan and one on the camshaft sensor. The bottom of the airbox has a finger that has to fit into this hole. Insert the mass airflow housing as you slide the airbox into place and secure the MAF with its two metal clips. Don't forget to reattach the wiring housing to the hook on the back of the airbox. With the airbox fully seated, reinstall its two 10 mm bolts. The front of the air intake should easily snap into the air box. Then secure it down with the four plastic pins.
Don't forget to reinstall the belly pan. It's important for fuel economy and protecting the alternator from water and debris. So if yours is damaged or missing, try to find a used one at a junkyard or on eBay like I did. Now it's time to refill the system with coolant. The following is the official procedure from the BMW service manual, and if you don't follow it, you're gonna have a bad time. Remove the expansion tank cap and bleed screw. Turn the ignition to on so that the fan works, but do not start the engine. Turn the heater all the way up and the fan to the lowest setting. Slowly pour coolant into the expansion tank until it starts spilling out the bleed screw hole. Keep pouring coolant until bubbles stop coming out of the hole. The coolant level may slowly drop. Repeat this step until the coolant level stops dropping. Replace the bleed screw and check the coolant level in the expansion tank. The float has two marks on the end. The upper mark should float above the fill hole. Replace the expansion tank cap and start the engine. Let the engine idle until the temperature gauge reads normal. Make sure the engine does not overheat. If it does, shut off the engine and start over from step one. If the temperature stays stable, take the car for a short test drive, but keep your eye on the temperature. Then let the engine cool overnight and check the coolant level again in the morning. Top it off if needed. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. By the way, you can now support the channel by purchasing this awesome design available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and in a bunch of different colors as well. Check for a link in the description below. He drives a BMW. <laughs>